This is a spoiler alert. Plot lines will be discussed and first appearances and deaths will be brought up on this episode. Thank you. Please keep in mind that this is only my personal opinion. I have acquired a set of skills collecting comic books in many years and made mistakes and learned from those mistakes. I hope this is a helpful video. Thank you for watching. And up, up and away we go to Midtown Comics. Checking out the new issues for this Wednesday, the 30th of November 2022. It was a pretty good night. Found some solid issues, some first appearances. Uh, good variants, all variants. I think I had two issues that were not variants. That issue was really interesting. This issue was scary as heck. Loved it. These are the variants. This one I had doubts, but I took it anyway, and I felt that this issue will have some sort of special achievement uh, in storytelling. Uh, Darth Vader, you can't go wrong. You gotta get it. About two variants, I think. Strange Academy was just rolling out some really good stuff, but I felt that it wasn't really worth getting into my budget. Strange with the beautiful cover, I couldn't find the variant. Uh, I think the variant was probably sold out, and this is me going down the stairs and fake tumbling it down. Hello my comic book friends, welcome to another episode of weekly comic book review, excuse me. Today's comic book review is for November 30th, 2022. Let's get to it. Now, this week has been pretty good. You probably saw from the earlier video. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm out of backwards and I'm waiting for a shipment from CW, I think, or CWC. Uh, let me see, let's see if we can get the right terminology as I veer off again. I ordered directly from the store, and they uh, had a good price. Yeah, this this group, B, ECW, this group. They have an awesome store, and they gave me uh, like some email receipts. I bought 1,000 backboards for about a little bit close to $115. Hopefully, the box could be reusable, so that. Um, I don't have to buy a comic book box, so we'll see. I'll let you know about that once I get the shipment. But right now I'm out of backboards and I have a lot of uh, uh, poly plastics for these books. Um, that being said, let's begin. Okay. Let's put these babies on the side. Okay. Blue Beetle, graduation day one. This is a beautiful cover, by the way. Here's the synopsis. Graduation day, chapter one. Jamie Reeves has a lot to juggle when either his finals for senior year or new year villain is tearing up El Paso. Jamie is always torn between two worlds, but when his worlds come crashing together at his high school graduation, nothing will ever be the same. A message from the Reach Bombardos, Jamie Scrab. Um, it starts to throw off his connections to the device, and if it wasn't enough, Jamie's parents and friends are pressuring him about his next steps in life. But what's hidden from here on Earth's that's drawn the reach back? And where did this new fadery man come from? Can Jamie find balance in his life and rise to become a true hero, or is it curtains for the Blue Beetle? No. This drawing, this book, like every other book, well done. Um, they're about approximately, uh, looks like, I know they have a, do they have a, okay, main cover looks dope, by the way. Um, and the variant I got is the Curly Hammer stock variant. And... You can see, you know, this book is well drawn, very simplified, not a lot of detail, straight to the point. The details are done in the color schemes. And a lot of like commercializing here of other books. I think there is a key appearance here, but it's not listed in League of Comic Geeks. 
I thought I saw it in uh, in Key Collector, but unfortunately, no, Key Collector does not have it either. Um, I did read the story very sh very uh, fast. I have to go back to it again. Um, but it is a first issue, so definitely something to grab. A lot of fun. I actually had a lot of fun reading this issue. I just thought it was pretty, uh, pretty much of a of a Kickstarter of a new series, um, and into the universe where um, Jamie has become a part of. I mean, the only thing valuable about his about him is this really his first appearance. I mean, he's he's um, a descent. Uh, sort of, um, who is this? Graduation day, chapter one. Who is this? I have no idea who this is. Um, let me see if I could check. No, I don't know who this is. This could be a first appearance, but I don't know who this is. Huh, interesting. Interesting. Pretty cool design. Looks like another beetle right here. If anyone knows who this is, that would be awesome. You can just put it in the comment section, please. This was a good story. I enjoyed it. And honestly, it's just a continuation of him. The actual character from Earth 1. And, um... Oh, yeah, that's right. Key Collector had this character who they removed from first appearance. I don't understand why. I, maybe she appeared somewhere else, who knows. But this was a cool fight, I enjoyed it. Um, didn't last long, that person disappeared. I don't know who this person is, um, believe it or not. And it's not even listed in the supporting characters, which kind of disappoints me about um, kind of disappoints me with um, League of Comic Geeks, but other than that, honestly, I think you should take this, whoa, look at this, Waller versus Wildstorm, oof, I know I got the Wildcat, so we'll see what goes on with that, but other than that, let me not veer off, definitely a collector's item, I think, will it have value, I don't know, this seems to be a sleeper, because I see a first appearance, I see a battle. There's, it has all the elements of a good comic book and of high value comic book, um, but it's gonna take some time. So I think it's just one of those sleeper one dollar bin comic books that's just gonna go up in the air. So let's go to the next one. We have here Planet of Hulk World Worker. Now at first I wasn't gonna get this, then I read the story, and what can I say? It's in the collection. I got the Camucoli Scar variant. Son of Scar. Son, excuse me. Sakar, Son of Hulk. Millennium. A thousand years from now. The planet Sakar, a young woman with the green skin, searches for the legendary green scar to help save her brother from a group of apocalyptic cultures. But which Hulk she, will she find? After all these years, is she truly the Scarson who will save us all? Or the war breaker who will destroy us. Now, I'm going to tell you, this whole uh, series is different in a way that it's quite a different universe. I'm, I'm going to be telling you this. It, it, it's got potential. I've enjoyed uh, the story, and I think I like how different it is. I think I like how, not I think I I like how it's affected by Planet Hulk. And all these triggers that Planet Hulk had created, I just think this was a great spin-off of that series. Um, I believe there are some first appearances, but it doesn't look like it in... in uh, it's not noted here in um, the League of Comic Geeks, but Key Collector has it down as... Uh, they don't have it down either. I don't know if I'm looking at the right stuff. Actually, you know what? It was, um, let me go to Key Collector Comic Books and uh, check out the keys this week. 
and sometimes it'll get updated. This is why you gotta be careful about Key Collector. Um, prequel to Planet Hulk, 1000 years in the future. First appearance of Tala, a young woman with green skin searching for the legendary green scar. That's true. Um, first appearance of Balo, the brother of Tessa, Tala. That's true. Multiple and other Hulk-like characters introduced. So this definitely, like, I'll be honest with you. I've read every issue of Planet Hulk. I even still have them. And it's part of my personal collection. And other than that, there's a lot of new things happening here. So this is the first issue of something we don't know what's going to become in the next few months. So it's worth every effort to get this comic book. Not because of its spec, but the story itself is amazing. It's a great concept. It's something to look forward to. Um, I don't know if I want to get another issue because, first off, um, there's approximately, I count, six. Six variant covers. And um, the main cover is pretty awesome. I skipped on the Yule variant. Um, which I felt, you know, it's a, it actually shows the appearance of the two supporting characters, um, who are looking for the Hulk that they need help with, who can help assist them. So I'm like, you know, there's, there's a 125 Kubert variant, there's a 150 Brown variant, those are the ratios, there's a Boss Logic variant, oh god, I want that the most, um, but I went with, you know, uh, this, this variant, which I think is pretty cool. Um, the main cover is not what I wanted, but it, it's a really good look. I think it's pretty dope. Um, I should have gone with the U variant too, because there is a first appearance of the individuals looking for the Hulk, meaning, um, um, the young woman who's looking for the green skin, the one, young green skin woman looking for, um, the Hulk that needs help, that need, that has to help them, excuse me, I'm a little bit it's late in the morning here um but other than that i think this is worth it i think this is something to definitely have in your collection um and at the same time it has potential again potential just like uh blue beetle graduation day now let's go to the next comic book on my pull list and that is plush holy moly Serial Killing, Cannibalistic Furries, Plastic and Vinyl, and Doug Wagner and Daniel Hilliard, Hilliard, excuse me, are back. This time they recruited colorist extraordinaire Rico Renzi for their disturbing neon horror spin off of spin on fursuit psychopaths and bizarre love in plush. David Felcher is um co edit into attending his first furry convention, he accidentally happens upon a group of furries devouring a human. The insanity begins. Do they just want Devin for dinner or something much more wicked? Uh, yeah, this is a crazy book. Like I said, <laughs> spoilers, but look at this crap. Holy moly. Wow. Wow. <laughs> this is the big moment, really. Um, this artwork looks like it came from the guy who did Invincible, and I like his work. I think his work is really consistent. I like that. I like the fact that, uh, I'm not a big fan of something like that, but it works, you know. Um, I'm very critical when it comes to placement of the characters, and I think I feel like he's executed, but he could do much better. Um, it's still a good book. It's still collectible. You gotta get this. Look, look at it. Oh my god, that's so scary. <laughs> and this is so funny. I read this with somebody at Midtown Comics, one of the workers there, and it is insane. It is just a great book. It's a horror book. It's, um, oh god, look at these variants. Oh, wow. <laughs> is it worth it? Yes. You must have this in your collection. I want to see this more, too. I, I, I like the artwork of this individual with the ice cream man. And, um. I'm just thrilled to see what's going to happen in this one. Off to, um, you know, what Plush is about. Plush has. It's, it's freaking awesome. I just think. This is a variant issue, of course, but. 
You definitely have to have this. This there's just no doubt that excuse the lighting that you, you definitely have to grab this book. There we go. Much better, right? So I recommend it. Um let's go to the next one. Darth Vader issue number twenty nine. The tech no um, Union. Three decades ago, Anakin Skywalker slaughtered Watts at Tempor, a leader of a techno union, along with the rest of the Separatist leaders by the command of the Emperor. So who will private the jewel Tempor? What is he planning on Sokol Minor? And what will the handmaiden who now stands at Vader's side do when it's her job to choose if Jewel lives or dies? Also, which handmaiden is this? And what and will this new adventure fulfill Saber's dream of derailing Vader's journey to the dark side? Or simply complete it? I got the La Roca variant. It's a beautiful variant. Um, so far, uh, right now... Um, I'm looking for some things here with regards to what's going on and it is the first appearance of Joel Tamborn a pirate um, you can't go wrong with a Vader comic book I mean they really put effort into the story here and um, this comic book was done very well um, I think it was simple I think they kept the lettering and everything in, in place I think there's a lot of picturesque here um, right use of shading story is, is quite interesting and it tells the story the way it is um, other than that there's a lot of this six square grid thing going on which you know kind of reminds me of how the Watchmen used to have their stuff going you know in, st in, <laughs> in storytelling excuse me so honestly this is a great book to have um I don't think it's going to be the most valuable. I think it's just going to be um, one of those books that tells a pretty good story. And this was a good story. And this variant is beautiful. Uh, other than that, it's not going to have a high value. But I enjoyed the book. The book was great. Let us go to the next book. Um, Star Wars High Republic. I kind of question this. This is Dark Horse, the High Republic version. <laughs> Crazy, right? So, uh, let's read about it in, the, in its adventures. Uh, quest for the Jedi. For young Padawan, Sal Malagon, joining the ranks of noble Jedi order, has been all she's ever wanted. But a chance uh, encounter with the crew of the eccentric myth misfits makes her question everything she has taken for granted in her life. Trapped aboard the ship of infamous space pirates, Maz Kanata will save ever be will save ever be able to rejoin the jedi and if she spends so much long with maz and her crew will she even want to i think this story wasn't was great it's a great story i did question um this being a same title but in dark horse's realm um and i just think that it was kind of i like it at one point because i felt that you know, it shows that there's a variation of storylines with the same title. So hopefully, you know, this run will will execute very well for what the series is projecting to do. Um, so other than that, uh, I think Key Collector had a first appearance on this. Which I don't see. Uh, yeah, okay, well, well. It says, first full appearance of Therm, first full appearance of Quiet, first full appearance of Colomort, first full appearance of Alak, first appearance of Inspector Wrath. A lot of first appearances on this, as noted by Key Collector. Um, honestly, this is quite the interesting story. Let's just go through it real quickly. And this character to me is brand new. I've never this this character could be related to that toy that just was a um, it was a peg warmer. 
and we all familiar with Maz's um, like bar and uh, there she is this this is a very interesting story it's just in that realm of the Star Wars um, the Star Wars before Force Awakens um, their um, world what was going on before Ray came into play um, here and I think this is this was actually a little bit fun uh, the artwork is simple once again this was definitely made for kids um, I think it's it's pretty cool I mean look at these characters they're beautiful oh, let's give it to you up close I mean this is pretty cool look at that yeah Oh, that's a beautiful cover coming up next. Look at that. I think I might be a fan. I really enjoyed this. This is like the beginning of a new relationship of a group that we're probably going to get, we're probably going to love. And I hope it turns out great. I mean, I think this is a great relationship here. This is a build up to Boz's crew. I like this. I really do. I think it's going to be great. And I can't wait for issue two. So I do recommend this. Not, I was going to say not because of the first appearances. But you know what? Screw it. Because of the first appearances. Because there are characters here at play. And because maybe they might end up in the movies. But who knows? Um, I'll be honest with you. It's an awesome, awesome concept. And I can't wait for more. So definitely something to look forward to. Let's move on to this beautiful Strange cover again. Strange does it. They hit it out of the ballpark with these beautiful covers of Clea. And this cover has a negative image of the character I'm looking at. I mean, well, for Kate. And I question it. And I, 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 I like the idea of what's going on here. And I'm kind of feeling like misunderstanding here what Key Collector and... And also, uh, League of Comic Geeks is missing, and I think they're not saying it, but there is a, I think this is a new character. Um, let's go through it, okay? First off, here's the synopsis called Ghost Stories. Who are the Blasphemy Cartel? The secrets of the cartel are revealed, and it comes to the unlikely sources. Will this be the help Clea needs to bring peace to her adopted realm? Or will she be too much, or will this be too much for the Sorcerer Supreme to handle? Um, this story starts out slow, and then by the end, we, we, we are in question of what's going on here. And, you know, a lot is going on, not a lot, it's just a slow-moving comic book, this part of the story. And a lot of things started happening that were coming to trigger on, um, on new things. And here's this character who I have no idea who uh, who this person is. I mean, look at this. This is a, a question mark. You could draw a smiley face on that. Um, so I question who is this person. Um, so this this there's a there's a lot of confusion here. I might have to reread this again carefully. Um, I'm not going to give away a lot, but I could tell you there's something going on here that I'm not aware of. So I bought the book thinking um there's possibilities of value here but more than that this story has got me interested so any comic book that you go back and forth back and forth is like a good comic book because your curiosity is at stake here and you're willing to find out i'm willing to find out um beautiful cover by the way i really love this now let's move on to the last one and that is the Wild Storm number one. This is a company that Jim Lee sold to DC Comics while he was at uh, Image. And um, there's a lot going on here. I can tell you this is an $8 comic book, which blew my, uh, it blew away my, um, my budget of $30 a week. And I'm not liking that. But I had to get it because there are a lot of new things that are happening here and I didn't want to miss out and I'm definitely going to have to read it again. I couldn't read it at all and the other thing is is that it's, it's got this crazy like glue bind that I have to be careful how I flip my pages or else the comic book's going to get damaged and the value of it's going to go down. This Sorry everybody, I got cut off there. Um let's continue. 
It's a little cut off. Uh, my camera's darn die soon, so gotta really work this up. So, um, it will be included with the new stories featuring Wildstorm characters in the DC Core line. This is crazy. I mean, there, we got the characters from um, Wildstorm mending with um, DC characters, and I think that's. Uh, that's amazing. I think it's 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 been done before with uh, Variant and um, DC and Marvel together in crossovers, and this is quite an interesting run um, because of this integration. Um, I'm gonna tell you that Key Collector has scouted um, some first appearances. I will tell you that right now. I just gotta get through the list here. Oh, it's funny, it's not here. I oh here it is. Okay. First appearance of City Boy, the ability to magically manipulate cities around him. And the first appearance of Core, a Ukrainian superhero. So let's go through the comic book real short. I can't bend the comic book too much. Uh I think there's a lot going on here. I can only give you a taste of what's going on here. There's Death Blow. Deathblow was an awesome comic book. I mean, it, it's a dollar bin warmer here. And I wasn't happy with the fact that he had died in the past. And um, some Gen X comics. Um, so literally a lot of storylining here. And literally two to three pages, sometimes even four, of each individual story. Um, honestly, there's just a, this is a test taster, like a flight of beer here. Um, and I think this is the, nope, I don't know. I thought it was the city changer, boy. Um, yeah, so there you have it. There are a lot of beautiful, um, variants for this. And honestly, I think this is the most my most favorite cover ever. So, there you go. This is this week's picks. I hope you like this video. Please subscribe and like. Have a great day. Thank you very much. This episode was made possible by the apps and music listed below. Subscribe and like, and thank you for watching.